Hello guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Philip, and today I'm going to be showing you how to make this nice game of bouncy car on scratch. Now in this game you have a car that's bouncing on these hills and its wheels move independently so it looks like reality. Also the car has different speeds and its wheels rotate depending on the speed. I, may, I might make a part two of this game where I'll add maybe more levels or make the track longer or have to collect coins or something like that. So if you like the video, subscribe and turn on notifications. So let's get started. Click the create button and the first thing we're going to do is make the wheel. Now to the wheel, we are going to add spokes because later on we're going to make it turn and we want to see how it turns. Okay, so let's paint a sprite. So the wheel is just going to be a, a, a circle. So the fill will be white and the outline will be, let's say, 10. Okay, hold on shift to get like a perfect circle. And... All right, oh, whoops. So there we go, make sure it's centered and now zoom in a bit to add the spokes. So we'll just draw lines, hold on shift again to make a straight line. Let me do that one again. Oh. And that looks good. Next, let's make the ball fall with gravity. So, when green flag clicked, I want it to forever fall down, right? So that will change Y by something negative. So if you try negative 10, it falls down. Now, it is falling down, but that doesn't look like gravity, because like I said, we want it to fall with gravity. When it falls with gravity, the lower it gets, the faster it falls. So for this we will make a variable that I will call false speed for the sprite only okay the beginning set false speed to let's say zero in the forever change false speed by negative one and change y by false speed all right and at the beginning we'll position it in zero zero okay yep start and there we go the lower it gets when it falls the faster it falls now we want the wheel to stop at a certain point all right so for this I will go to the backdrops and I will just draw a green line from grass here somewhere near the bottom of the screen I'm actually gonna do a small rectangle So there we go, and let's say somewhere here, oh, oops, fill zero. All right. All right, that's good, yeah. All right, now let's go back to the wheel. And what we want to do, like I said, when it touches that color, we want it to stop. Okay, so we will use an if else, and that's because we want to, if touching this color, then we want it to stop. Otherwise, so else, we want it to keep falling. So keep falling means this code right here, so this will be in the else. Okay, and we will get an if touching color. And we will pick this green color from the screen. So if touching the color, then we want it to stop. So to stop, that means we want it to stop falling. So we will set false speed to zero so that it stops falling. All right, let's test it. And it stops on the line. But let me show you that the ball, it can stop on any position on the green line. So here, let's see, if it drops from here, it goes like this. If I drop it from over here, it goes deeper into the green line. If I drop it from here, it goes less into the green line. 
And depending from where you drop it, it falls differently into the green line. So to fix this, because sometimes it can go like this. And I mean, it's okay if it goes a bit in like that or like that. But if it like comes up on the other side, that's not okay. So to fix this problem, we will make another color under this uh, green color. And uh, we will ask ourselves if we're touching that other color. And if we're touching it, we'll just move a bit back up. Okay. So, so the back drops. And we're actually going to select this. And the outline will actually be the green. And the fill will actually be a brown color from like the soil or the dirt okay let me get a nice brown yeah and then the outline will be um whoops the outline will be like a 10 okay let me just make it bigger All right, so there we go. Now let's make the wheel get pushed up a bit when it touches this brown color. So we'll go back to the wheel code and we will um, do something while we are touching the uh, brown color. So repeat until, we're gonna ask ourselves, um, we're gonna say not touching the brown color. So while we are touching the brown color, we will uh, push ourselves a bit back up, sorry, up. Uh, but So we will do this until it's not touching. So when it's touching, push yourselves up. And we'll put it, the code here because that's the only time it can happen. So that's the place we're gonna put it. So it will push ourselves a bit up, like I said. So change Y by, let's see, five. Okay, let's test. And let's try to drop it from somewhere else and somewhere else. And we can see that it always uh, drops only on the green line. Next, let's make the wheel go left and right when we click the arrows. And we'll also make it um, turn in that direction. Okay? So we'll ask ourselves if. Oops, key, right arrow, pressed, change X by five, and we will turn right five degrees. Let's duplicate this if, and we'll do this left arrow, change X by negative five, and turn left five degrees. All right, let's test. And we go this way, but we go left and we go right. And I think that looks good. Now we see that the wheel is always going at the constant speed five or negative five. We want it to have um, different speeds. If you hold the right arrow, then we want it to go faster. Uh, and then left arrow, we want it to slow down, slow down, and then go backwards at one point. All right. So for this, we will need a variable. Make a variable and I will call it car speed. Okay. And at the beginning, set car speed to zero. And here, um, in the forever, we will change X by car speed. And then uh, here in the right arrow, instead of the change X by five we will do um change car speed by let's say one and then same for the left arrow except it's going to be a change car speed by negative one okay and also two things the uh this car speed can go super fast it can go super high, which will make the wheel go super fast. So we will pick a certain value um, that 
it won't be able to go past so that it won't be able to go too fast and the second thing is the same for when it goes left it will pick it won't go too fast left either all right so we'll ask ourselves if our um speed car speed is greater than i'll pick 20 then we will just uh, leave it in, at 20. So set car speed to 20. And the same for the other one. So if car speed is smaller than negative 20, set car speed to negative 20. All right, let's test it. And when we go left, you can see that it goes faster. The further it goes, the faster. And then the same for the right. So that's good. But as you saw, the wheel, uh, when we click the right arrow, for example, it turns 5 degrees, and then it doesn't turn anymore. Because that's exactly what we tell it to do. If key right arrow press, then turn 5 degrees. And since we only hold it for a tiny bit of time, it gets out of the if and does all the other stuff. So it only turns five degrees when we click it, and then it doesn't turn anymore. So that's not good. Eh, sorry, and same for the left arrow. So that's not good. So instead of turning here in the left arrow pressed and here, we want it to turn in the forever. We want it to always turn. But we need it to turn. So when it stays still, we don't want it to turn at all. When it goes uh, to the right, we want it to turn to the right and the faster it goes to the right the faster too and same for the left as for the right so here we need to turn by something now we could use a variable and make it do all those stuff but we already have that variable that does exactly that which is car speed it does exactly that so we will just turn car speed degrees all right let's test it and we click it once and we let go and so we click it once and we let go we can see that it keeps turning and left it turns left and when we stay still so here when we stay still it doesn't move anymore so that's good but it moves faster than it turns so it doesn't really look realistic so we need something more than car speed let's do something like car speed times two that's more than car speed. Let's test it. And I think that's uh, much better. It looks more realistic. Next, let's see if our wheel will work on a hill instead of just straight ground. So for the backdrops, we'll make a bump. So select, so click this right here, which is named reshape. Click on the reshape icon and select our rectangle. Click somewhere near the center, like that, which will allow to move it like this. Okay? So we'll do thing like this so that we can see if how it goes uphill and downhill. Okay? I think that's pretty good. So let's test it. Okay, let's go downhill with the small speed. All right, let's go uphill with the speed. Let's go downhill here. Yeah, it works, but as you can see, it's really bumpy. So to fix this, we will actually do this trick where we separate um, the part here where it moves along the green line apart from everything else. So we will just make another when green flag clicked. And don't forget another forever. So that the code here gets run uh, more times. Okay, let's test it. And here, let's go uphill. And as you can see, it's less bumpy. Now let's name this uh, wheel rear wheel. And we'll duplicate it and we will name this next one front wheel 
okay and first of all here we're gonna not want to start at the same point so x let's say 50 okay so let's see what it does let's test it and there you go there are the two wheels and let's go downhill there we go uphill and we can see that the wheels when um, they go downhill they get further apart from each other and then when they go uphill they get a bit closer okay so we don't want that to happen we want them to stay at the same distance between them at all times so what we will do is we will make the rear wheel move with the right and left arrows and the front wheel all it will do is it will just follow the rear wheel so to do this we have to get rid of some of this code so here we go we want to leave the change x by car speed and we also want to leave the turn that's all all right and next we will use this new block from the sensing category that's called distance to something and we're going to use distance to rear wheel and we're going to use it to ask ourselves if distance to rear wheel is greater than 50 so if they're further apart than they're than they're supposed to be then we will want to just point back towards the other wheel and move uh, let's say one step towards it all right so point towards the real rear wheel right and then move one steps move one step all right let's duplicate this and do it the same if they're too close so this will be 50 and this will be negative one steps all right let's test it here we go and we can see that they always stay the same distance apart from each other now you might have seen there's a problem the front wheel isn't spinning and that is because when the distance is too big or too small um, we point towards the rear wheel and while, while it's pointing to the rear wheel we can't spin so what we want to do is we only we want to we want it to point towards the rear wheel only for a bit of time and then we want it to keep on spinning so to do this right before we point towards the rear wheel we need to remember what direction it had and then after it points towards the rear wheel and then moves some steps then we want to point back into that same direction that it was right before we pointed to the rear wheel so to do this make a variable I'll name it current direction for the sprite only okay and like I said we need to remember right before we point towards the rear wheel we got to remember um, the uh, direction so we will set current direction to direction okay and then after so after we point towards rear wheel and move uh, one steps because we're working on this if right now uh, then we want to point in direction um, current direction okay and then the same for this one so all right same for that if let's test it and now you can see that both wheels are spinning so that is much better now I'm gonna go ahead and upload my car sprite all right so I already have a car sprite prepared from before this video so that it has holes where the wheel should be so that these wheels can go there okay so we're gonna make my card smaller say 50 all right that's good now the wheels barely fit which is not good so we'll make the wheels smaller say 80 and I think that's good so let's go ahead and make the rear wheel 82 so both wheels the same size all right and now this uh, car we will want it to always go to the rear wheel when green flag click forever go to rear wheel all right let's test it 
and as you can see, uh, the car went down there, and the rear wheel is down there, uh, under it. And the reason the car went down is because it's going to the rear wheel, and the rear wheel went down because it only stays up if it's not if it's touching this color. But it's not touching this color because it's under the car. It's touching the color of the car. All right. So like I was saying, the rear wheel went there because the center of the car goes to the center of the rear wheel. That's what it does when it goes to rear wheel. So we're going to make the center of the car be where the rear wheel would go. So like that. Okay. So let's test it now. And there we go. We have the rear wheel positioned in the spot there now it doesn't look perfect it's a bit to one side so I think that's that's good all right now we want the car to point towards the front wheel so that it points into the direction we're going for example we're going downhill it points down uphill it goes it points up so in the code we will point towards front wheel let's test it and it works except the distance between the two wheels that I currently have is 50. And that's not enough distance so that they fit into those holes. So we need to change what the distance has to be. So this one can start, let's say, at 75x. So that means this will be 75 and this will be 75. So let's test it. And there you go, the wheels are in the right spot. So that is good. Now let's try to go uphill and downhill. So when you go downhill, as you saw, the wheels stay at the same um, same distance at all times. And uphill, the same thing. But when the car hits the edge, it kind of goes crazy. That's fine because the game I'm making is the Jeep is going to stay in one spot. And then the road will move. So, let's do that. So, to do this, first of all, we will need to make the um, land, the road, into a sprite. Because we need to move and backdrops cannot move. So, let's go ahead and do that. So, go to the backdrops, copy it so that we can put in the sprite, and then delete it. Alright. And, like I said, let's make a sprite. So, paint a sprite. And we're going to go ahead and paste the hill. And we're just going to drag it to the left so that we have space to make another land form. And then click on the reshape icon so that you can drag it, drag those uh, circles to make it, to expand it. So if you want to make like something flat, if you want to make a hill, yeah. So here I'm going to make like flat kind of, it's going down and then up. And then select all of it, control A, and then drag it to the left again, and then you can make more. And then, yeah, click on the reshape icon again, and then drag the circles to um, expand it. You can also make new circles, wherever you'd like, just by clicking on the line, somewhere on the outline, all right? And then control A again to select it all, move it to the left. And yeah, just keep repeating this until you, have, you think you have a pretty big um, sprite. All right, so here I'm going to make a small hill. All right. And I think that's good. Now let's position this sprite somewhere where you can't see the bottom of it. Something like that. So it looks like the ground. Let's rename it. Ground. And when green flag clicked, we want it to go to the Y, uh, what it is here. So let's round it up to zero. And then the X, how to figure out the X is you just drag the sprite until it ends. And that's the X. So here, let's drag it. And make sure where, where you drag it, it starts like up on a hill. So I'm going to do something like that all right so my x is 1214 okay so 
Let's see where it positions, and there you go, it positions in that spot. Now, let's make the ground sprite move instead of the Jeep. Okay, so the Jeep, what's causing it to move is this block right here, change X by car speed. It's in both of the wheels, here and here, all right? So instead of that block, we need to somehow tell the ground to move. So we need a broadcast. So instead of the block, change X by car speed, we are gonna broadcast a message. And I'm gonna name my message move. Okay. And we need to take the code out from both wheels, but we only need to broadcast from one wheel because that's enough to just broadcast from one wheel. We don't need to broadcast from both wheels. All right, now to the, go to the ground sprite. When I receive move, we need to go, we need to change X by, and we need to change X by the opposite of what the car was going. Because if it was going, if the car was going right, then the ground would look like it's going left, look like it's moving left. So the opposite of car speed, which is zero minus car speed. Okay, so let's test it. And when we go backwards, we can see that it gives us the sensation we're going backwards because the ground is uh, going forwards and same with going forwards. Okay, so you can make there be less gravity by changing these two values here. This one, uh, change it to negative 0 0.1 instead of negative 1. And make sure you do it for both wheels, otherwise it won't give you that sensation. And when we test it, you can see that when you come off a hill and you're in the air, you fall slower. So, because that we still, because we just simulated gravity. All right. Also, you can improve this game by um, adding levels or like having to collect coins or making the track longer. That's all I'll do for today. Let's name the project Bouncy Cars. Car, sorry. Bouncy Car. Alright. And thanks for watching. I hope you liked the video. And may the code be with you.